The king of Europe has been decided, Madrid again, conquering Europe in a grand style. What a final that was in Paris with Liverpool putting on everything. That game had everything. Pace, class. Uh, it was one of the finest UEFA Champions League finals I've seen in a very long while. Now, last week, no more news that Jose Mourinho and his team AS Roma won the inaugural UEFA Europa Conference League in a grand style after the defeated final by a goal to nil. It was a very beautiful game of football indeed. And also, now uh, for the Super Eagles of Nigeria, we've had our first game um, under the new manager, Jose Posero. And of course, his first game didn't end very well, but there were lots of positives to take from the game. We saw a beautiful game of football being played, and expectations are high as far as the African Cup of Nations is concerned. And that with the talent that is abound in this country, it is expected that the African Cup of Nations would be the goal. On that note, I welcome you to um, the program, the Sport Pizza, where you get the absolute best in the ever exciting world of sports. My name is Brownson, one of your hosts, and of course, my strike partner will join me later after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, my strike partner officially joins me at this time. Well, I like Philip. Good to have any program today. Yeah, top of the day to you, Brownson. Uh, it's great to be here once again to talk sports. A lot of sporting activities, climax, the UEFA uh, Conference League climax, and you know, uh, good for you, Mario. And of course, for our own players, with this, uh, a very sad one because uh, you know it was very hopeful that he could win it. And then, you know, uh, good for him as the fact that it was the a major, the highest goal scorer as far as the UEFA Europa Conference League is concerned for 2021-2022 season. Uh, you know, it's really very good to be here. And then so many other events also are taking center stage. And uh, like you said, we'll be unveiling it as the program progresses. All right, let's begin the show with the UEFA Champions League finals that went down last Saturday. I'm sure everyone saw that game. Beautiful game of football. And then um, again, let's talk about the coach first. Um, Carlo Ancelotti have showed class. He left Everton just last season to Real Madrid and what a way to make a very bold statement um, this season by winning the UEFA Champions League again and the league title. Two titles in one season. Uh, a lot of people are asking if he would have, he would have done that with, um, uh, of course, uh, talking about Everton, Kunle. But, I mean, if, if talking about class, immediately Madrid got that goal. It's changes, tells, uh, or told all the story. Yeah, a very good one for Real Madrid. And then, uh, because a lot of people actually expected Liverpool to uh, get the job done. Prior to the final, I wrote to the final, you could see the way Liverpool actually navigated from the uh, group stage up to the semi-final and to the final. It was always looking like, you know, Liverpool were going to win. And for Madrid, yes, they rode to the final, they also faced a lot of storms. And, you know, one of their greatest storms, you know, the, the teams they had to battle has to be uh, Manchester, Manchester City. City. Mm. And then they were able to dig deep. They searched deeply and they got the needed result against a very smooth playing Manchester City. And then all road, I mean, all was for their take in the final. You win the game, in the final of any game, you can always expect anything to win. But, uh, you know, it was an end-to-end -end stuff. Like you said before, we got into the studio. One of the best games, uh, you know, uh, one will ever watch. One of the greatest soccer uh, artistry was on display on that day. And um, it was a very good one for uh, my, uh, for Manchester, Real Madrid. Their experience came to four. You know, they, is, when a team has won the UEFA Champions League 14 times, they always have that confidence over, uh, you know, their opponent because they, 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 they know that, you know, they've won it in the time past and they have what it takes uh, to always win it any day, any time. And for uh, Liverpool, they did very well. Uh, you know, one, of, one major... Uh, audio that they couldn't cross yet, uh, last week, Brownson, has to be Kotua. I think Kotua <laughs> stood his ground. Hmm. He said he just wanted to ensure that because he has been so castigated, vituperations has been on him, and you know, since uh, he switched from uh, Chelsea to Real Madrid. You remember when he, uh, he joined Real Madrid, he said he was going there to win trophies, and when he couldn't win uh, the Champions League, and some uh, trophies in uh, Real Madrid. People were asking questions. So you said you are going there to win uh, trophies. Where is the trophy? But, you know, last week, he stood his ground. He said he was ready to die on the field. And, you know, when the player is so determined like yeah. that, and he gets to show it on the, on the field of play, I think it's good for him. And it's, 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 good. It's, it's good that he's able to stop all the onslaughts of Liverpool. Mane, uh, uh, the, the, the other guy uh, talking about Mo Salah, 
and the other players did everything within their capacity uh, to get the goal, but um, it didn't come to being. And that goal uh, by Junior was very vital. And you know, in games like this, it's just that moment of brilliance. That moment of that brilliance. Comes, I mean, that comes to you know that, that makes the difference. As a matter of fact, uh, I mean, if, if you look at shots on target, you give it to Liverpool. They had more shots on target absolutely. in that game, and then they if, were more dominant. I mean, just like just like what you said about the saves. If you look at the quality of saves, I mean, I mean they were extra. That's the kind of save you say um, a, a goalkeeper put up an extraordinary performance. Absolutely, because it was the one that kept Madrid in that game. In that game, some games, some goals that I mean, some goalkeepers would have considered. Cotua put it off, and then of course gave them the title. Now, if you look at how Madrid have played, and then the coach is even saying one or two players would come in during the summer and all of that. Do you think Madrid can? Uh, come out and fight for this title next season. <laughs> if you're talking about the uh, 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 UEFA Champions League, Brownson, any day, any time, it's uh, like like mention Real Madrid. It's looking like a bet, right? No, yeah, it looks like they're bet, right? No, no club has won double ever. The only clear club that comes close is um, AC Milan, and they've not won as much as ten trophies. Uh, tied to Everton Place tied to. So I think Madrid, for me, I, I keep saying it, they are the greatest club in the world. I am not a fan of Real Madrid, but the fact speaks for them. This season, they were not at their best at some point, and they were still able to win the league, and they have the Everton Champions League in their kitty. When I saw Real Madrid winning the 14 title, I felt like, ah, when is Arsenal ever going to win? <laughs> <laughs> We are a club like Arsenal. Let's, Never. Let's, let's not start. We we'll to win it. At, Arsenal should start by winning FA Cup and uh, Carabao Cup, and then <laughs> and the league. And then we can talk of the league later. <laughs> yeah, but Champions League is still far fetched. And by the way, Arsenal is not playing in Champions League next season. Europa League. Uh -huh. So, so let, let, let's move on. Again, Brazil. again, <laughs> Arsenal should. I think I think it's even an opportunity for Arsenal to win an European title. Win the Europa League next season. Manchester City, uh, United did it some uh, four years ago. Yeah, absolutely. They went to Europa and they, they got they the job it. done. Yeah. Again, if I feel if if, if Arsenal cannot again win um, Europa League, there's an option. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Conference League and at least get a European title. But anyway, let's move on. Talking about the Conference League, last Wednesday we saw um, maybe not a masterclass of football, but we saw. Coaching brilliance. Uh, I mean, Feyenoord were favourite to win that game. Uh, I mean, maybe the whistle um, went on. And of course, uh, we saw a beautiful game of football. They dominated pro um, proceedings, completed more passes than Roma. But of course, um, just, just like what we said again about the Madrid game, one moment of brilliance, Zaniolo got that ball, slotted it at the back of the net, and then um, they were able to defend that one goal to the end. Yeah. And of course, made history um, with, um, of course, the Conference League. Yeah, made history with the Conference League. The team, the first ever team to win the maiden edition of the uh, UEFA Europa Conference League. Fantastic one for AS Roma. Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, when, when you're talking about uh, what happened in the UEFA Champions League, also where the, that moment of brilliance, uh, you know, came to four and the team stood by the goal. I think if you are playing against Jose Mourinho and you are down by a goal in the champion, I mean in the, the final, final of the cup, I think you should forget it. You can't get that goal because <laughs> 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 we know what Jose Mourinho <laughs> is capable of doing. So I think when immediately Fernand considered that goal, I knew it was the end. You need something extraordinary. I've never seen it happen. Where, uh, you know, Jose Mourinho will be playing in the final and they will, they will be leading and the team will come back and get the goal again and probably win. I think it's going to be an uphill task for the team. Well, for fair enough, I think they did very well. Uh, like I said in the introduction, the Sivir was hoping to win it, but uh, uh, that didn't happen. A great opportunity. I think fair enough did very well this season. Uh, even in the league, they were they, they didn't do badly. And then if the, for what we saw in the final really got to show how well they did in uh, the Dutch uh, LDBC. So, uh, congratulations to Roma. They did very well. And uh, the question is, I think you saw the the, the tears, the tears of joy uh, coming from Jose Mourinho. It felt, you know... Mourinho seems to be very emotional. Uh, yeah, I think he's emotional. <laughs> uh, I think but for some people felt, come on, it's a Europa Conference League. Some clubs will even not... When, you know, Roma qualified for the Conference League... For the League, final? Yeah, no, no, when they qualified for the Conference League, felt some people were laughing like, so Jose Mourinho... He's going to play in the Conference League. You know, <laughs> a, a, a top club, top. Somebody said, stop 
coaches don't play in the Europa in Conference, the Conference League. League. Yeah, <laughs> but we've also seen top coaches that have played in Champions League, have played in Europa League, and are still dreaming of the title. Okay. Give it to this man. In the history of football, Jose Mourinho is the only coach that have won all European title in world football. Now you can take that to the bank. Now, the celebration didn't go well for Roma because they are now in big trouble. The team is being investigated uh, for what they call um, behavior of the players under investigation for a wrongful behavior. Now, the story says that Jose Mario and, and um, AS Roma are reportedly under investigation by federal prosecution for anti sporting chance and behavior of their players after their boss paraded celebrating the two the 2021-22 UEFA Champ Europa Conference League glory. Roma defeated final 1-0 to win the UEFA um, Cup last Wednesday uh, when Nicolo Zaniolo scored the winner for the Serie A side um, in the first half encounter. However, while celebration followed on Thursday as Roma paraded the trophy around the city in front of thousands of supporters during the bus parade some players taunted first rival Lazio by joining um, in chants ridiculing their city neighbors while also holding up banners I think that's where they say that this is unacceptable we understand that Roma has made history it's been long that uh, of course both teams have um, won um, trophy I mean if you look at what's on ground, I, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't remember the last time Roma won the um, title before this last one. But of course, you, you must also say that Lazio is even longer. But I think it's totally disrespectful to lift your, 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 your trophy in the same city with your city rival, taunt them that your fans should move to Roma and, and all of that. I mean, I, I, I think that's totally unacceptable. Uh, you know, that's over celebration. They over celebrated. You know, uh, Roma has not won a title in a very long time and uh, they were basking in the euphoria. When you see your, uh, you know, your rival, you feel like, man, we are, the, we are the real champion. We are the real deal. But they went too far, uh, which uh, didn't go down well with um, UEFA. I think um, they should be cautioned. And these are things that, you know, it's important to always reorientate uh, the fans that uh, football is not a do or die affair they should uh, respect those uh, that they need to respect because um you know you're winning today tomorrow it can be the turn of last year last year can also uh, win laurels and also begin to taunt you if if if, if you're if you are uh important with you are attacking uh you know you know making such comment about your rival and they get angry, fight can ensue, and anything can happen at the end of the day, which can lead to, uh, you know, casualties being recorded. So I think the fans, I mean, the, the management, the club owners need to always speak with the fans that um, they should also respect the fans, the opposition teams, uh, you know, anytime uh, the, the, the occasion warranted. And of course, the report also has it that star um, players, Zaniolo, um, joined chants demanding Lazio fans to change the channel while uh, Marak Kumbula held, uh, held up a sign mocking the club. We really wait to see what um, UEFA or the level of punishment that UEFA would bring. I think this deserves to be looked into uh, because this is a total disrespect for football. At this point, let's take a very quick break. We'll come back. More stories to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, Good Time seems to be returning to Nigerian football after Jose Pesero resumed his duty as the Super Eagles manager. Uh, in this part, we call it coach, <laughs> of course. Now, the first friendly game against Mexico, uh, even though they lost that game, I mean, there were flashes of brilliance by Nigerian players. Well, luckily, Philip uh, watched the game live while I was snoring. <laughs> Kuli, I mean, uh, you, you, you spoke so much about the game. Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. how would you see... How would you read the performances of the players? And of course, not just the players, for me, at this point, I think Nigeria has got talent. When we scratched out with the Nations Cup, I, I, I mean, I, I felt the problem wasn't with the players, but with the bench. The bench has to do with the technical team. Mm -hmm. So, tactically, how, how would you judge the first game of the coach? Yeah, I think um, I would give him um, a pass mark because uh, the first half, this is the first time he's working with the team and they had just a few uh, days to train together. And let's not forget, there's just 20 players in camp right now. Some of the players already pulled out. So, uh, we saw what happened in the first half, first half of the game. He had to checkmate the, uh, the, the Mexicans. And the team didn't really gel because all of the players were playing together for the time, first time. The likes of uh, uh, Sirio Dessis was 
in the attack for the very first time. You know, said Bonke has been in the team uh, for some time, but uh, he's not a regular with the team. And so I think he, he needed to watch how the team would play in the first half. And in the second half, the team came out smoking. Uh, the Alex Iwobi, Alex Iwobi was commanding in the midfield along with Joe Aribo. And let's not forget Calvin Bassi, he was on top of his game in that, on that day. I think it's just like, um, you know, Joe Aribo. And then Calvin Bassi continuing from where they stopped with their with Rangers. With, with Rangers, you know, in the national team, they were absolutely fantastic in the game. I think uh, uh, Alex it will be. I when, when I watched that game, I, I felt that uh, if Alex was in the in in the game against Ghana, he could have probably made a difference because we didn't have any creativity in the game against Ghana. And then uh, yeah, we saw Alex it will be playing one of his best games. Uh, for the Super Eagles in that game. And then player like um, Sonny Fisal, who actually we said we have uh, replaced Innocent Bonke. For me, Innocent Bonke has not been convincing in the colors of the Super Eagles. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, when he's been called, he's been called upon, he has been disappointing. Also, Victor Umboma uh, came on for Terry Murphy. Terry Murphy, uh, yes, some flashes of brilliance. Uh, on his part, but um, where he had the one on one on goal, he could not convert. Uh, where the Eagles could have draw level against uh, Mexico, Mexico. We also had uh, Ishak Rafi. These players, uh, you know, and also Chiamaka Madu, these players hmm. came onto the game. They were not looking like home base players. They took the ball. Uh, when they had the ball, they controlled very well. They played like professionals. And this uh, brought me back to uh, uh, what we used to see back then in the days of Clemens Westhoff, where home base players were being injected, played along yeah, with the, the professional, the, the, the we have a formidable team, yeah. yeah. We have a formidable team, the likes of Daniel Amokachi in 1990, and went to the African Cup of Nations in 1990, they were just home base players, I mean, just, just, just players like George Finidi. Now, don't forget that in 2013, there was even an home base player that gave us the African Cup of Nations. Yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was, an, uh, it was an home Sound base player, Sonny Mbada, that, that, that gave us the African Cup of Nations, and we, we had two, uh, about two, one or two other home base players in that team. So I think that this, with what the coach is doing, he also said after the game that so many positives uh, will be taken from the game because not the result they, they, they wanted, but I think he's impressed with what he saw. Mm. And let's not forget, uh, some of our players are, are not playing. With Fred in Didi is not there. Victor Osimen is not also there. So I think... But, well, I mean, well, but but it, it, but it Taiwan, you know, no, no, there's nothing. I think he's trying to work on his club. Probably a transfer deal is on the offering for uh, Victor Simon. Remember, uh, we have with this news that uh, you know Manchester United, Chelsea, uh, no, no, Manchester United, Arsenal, uh, even I think AC Milan are on his trail right now. We hmm. want to see how things uh, will pan out. out. But be. but uh, from what I saw uh, in the game, particularly in the second half. I think I was impressed with the display of the Super Eagles. All right, let's see. Next Thursday, that's the 2nd of, um, uh, what's it called again? 2nd um, of June. June. Yeah, June 2nd. We'll see Nigeria again in a friendly game, take on Ecuador. Now, that, that, that's not even a problem. Now, their first competitive game will be African Cup of Nations qualifying series. That, uh, of course, will begin next month. And their first point of call will be right here in Nigeria when they take on Sierra Leone. Now, Sierra Leone, the Leone Stars are not, uh, I mean, they're not strangers to Nigeria. Yeah. And um, teams like this can be spoilers. That game will be coming up um, next week. And on the 9th, uh, I beg your pardon, on the 9th of um, June, June. Kule, this game, we must start very well. We must make a statement of intent from the beginning of this competition. I think kudos should go to the NFF. Uh, I'm one of those that castigates them a lot. Uh, the fact that uh, despite uh, knowing that we, we're having a new coach in charge of the team, and if we're just going to play the game straight, then there might be troubles. But right now, he has seen the team play against Mexico, and uh, he's going to see them play against Ecuador as well. So I think this will give him an opportunity to really see how the team, what, from what they saw against Mexico, uh, also build on uh, that against Ecuador. So coming into the game against Sierra Leone, is a, like you said, we need to start very well. The Sierra Leoneans are a team that cannot be taken for granted. Remember what happened here in Nigeria where we were leading 4-0 and they came back and restored parity. 
Then they reverse fixture in Freetown. We couldn't get a goal, and it was ended in a stalemate. So we can't afford to 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 start on a bad note. We need to trade the part of caution. Let's also forget that the game will be played at the Montreal Abella Stadium, and it's going to be played behind closed doors. No fans will be will, will be watching because of the every punishment that was meted out to us for the early behavior of the fans in the game against Ghana. So uh, I think that uh, it's good that these friendly games. Are being played so uh user Pesero will not have an option he has talked so passionately i think i love the way he's been talking he, he is so desirous uh, about hand the fact that he's the coach of the super Eagles. how he would translate that into winning laurels for the super Eagles. he said he's hoping that the super Eagles will become the fourth uh, african combination champions we wait to see how things will go but you know brown said <laughs> when you are so confident and positive we talk positively mm. uh, i think uh, that might actually take you to greater heights well in the past we've seen coaches that talk um, uh, you know that express so much passion brown said uh, I, I think uh, uh, you see oftentimes when we employ the security service of foreign coaches mm. they tend to always do well with the national team i have not seen a coach uh, a foreign coach who was in who, who has been in charge of this the super egos that has not done well so yes. i think the person who also uh do his bit in mean, nigerian football you know for us the, the most important part is um is laurel let's wait and see how well that goes absolutely but on monday the 13th of june again the african cup of nations qualifying series will be on again their second competitive game let's hope the first one um ends in a win right here in nigeria the second one will be all the way to mauritius where they'll take on of course the mauritius national team um it's going to be a, a, a crunchy game indeed yeah, we can't afford to, to, to drop a point in that game. Uh, you know, what we, we look at the ranking, Mauritius against what, Nigeria. What do you want to say? Miles of apart. Nation. Yeah, 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 miles apart. But, you know, that doesn't play football. It's about the team that hungers that needs the game the most. So that's why it's expedient that we don't take chances against this team. Syria alone, we, 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 we need to beat them right there in Nigeria. And in four days, uh, four days after that game, we need to go to see uh, uh, Mauritius and get the job done, beat them convincingly. Then we can come back and say, and let's not, let's not also forget, the fans are still not happy about the fact that the Eagles are not going to the African Cup of Nations. So, I mean, the World the Cup, World I beg your pardon. They need to make, the, the players, the coaching crew need to make the Nigeria, I mean, the fans believe in the Super Eagles again. Let's talk about transfer stories. Next week on the program, we'll have time to give you some more transfer rumors and gossip. Now, Manchester United are in the news again. They've got new manager. Um, Ten Hag has been talking tough and um, he wants to, uh, I mean, at least he's not talking about overhauling the team. He needs up to five to six players, according to him. But Kunle, how? I mean, with the way United plays, how many players do you think the coach would need to turn this team around? Yeah, I think he knows best. And uh, like you said, he said, yeah, he needs six, just six players. Uh, uh, completely, completely different from what uh, when um, Mauricio Pochettino was um, called upon, then was um, being contacted. Uh, they asked him what he needed. I said he needed to overhaul the entire team. And uh, if you ask me, Ten, uh, Ten Hag knows best. Uh, if you are, if, if I'm in his shoes, I'll probably overhaul the team, just like uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mauricio Pochettino said, uh, because there seems to be a lot of money. It's supposed to be Manchester United. The, uh, the city of Manchester is supposed to be united in that club, but unfortunately, it is disunited. There's so much disunity among the players, and then um, uh, before now, we had uh, even that um, uh, uh, Pogba uh, pulled up, uh, pulled out from the the group, uh, the Manchester United group, and he said he's going, he's going to leave at the end of the season. And then um, there's, you know, some players are also complaining about uh, some certain things. So this has always been a problem with Manchester United in the time past, but. Um, uh, the great Sir Alex Ferguson was able to undo all that. If a player, if, if Sir Alex feels that a player is actually not, is having problems, uh, he, he, he puts him by the side and works with other players. Even if they are a great player, he, 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 we've seen it with Ruvan Nistroy and them. I think I'm forgotten one other player uh, that, um, you know, Sir Alex Ferguson had to put by the side and brought in other players. So, I think Ten Hag needs a lot of work to be done. He needs to stamp his authority. Make these guys understand that if you are not playing well, you need to play for this club. These players are making Manchester United look like some clubs. You know, Manchester United is one of the biggest clubs in the English in the history of the English Premier League, mm. and they deserve that respect. They are expending on players, 
and they expect the players to pay back what they are being what they are getting on the field of play. And that's but that is not happening. So I think Ten Hag needs something extraordinary uh, to really bring Manchester United back to winning ways. That's what they must do. They must get to um, at least top four next season. Uh, I mean, also tennis world is absolutely buzzing. If you are not watching the French Open, you are missing a great deal. But before we take that, Kunle, thank you so much for coming on the program today. Yes, my pleasure to be here, Brownson. Yes, that's my final whistle on the program today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We want to believe that you enjoyed the show as much as we did. Now, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms currently displaying on your screen. Now, we are very big on YouTube. Type Spot Pizza. Now, don't forget to subscribe. And, of course, you can also drop some comments. We'll be so glad to hear from you. My name is Brownson. Until we meet again next week, please stay safe.